All right, so here's our third video, postulates and theorems. So a postulate, and I'll write this out, is a statement that's accepted as fact. You don't need proof on a postulate. And proofs are going to be all over geometry, and we'll talk more about proofs in other videos. So again, a postulate, and let's get our pen ready here. So we'll say a postulate is a statement that is accepted as fact. And we'll give an example. Now a theorem, by the way, has been proven. It's been proven using other theorems or postulates, and we'll talk about it. You may be familiar course when you took algebra with the Pythagorean theorem. So we'll look at postulates and theorems. So again, a postulate is a statement that is accepted as fact. And let's look at one. So the first one is the segment addition postulate. So let's say, with, and remember from the other videos, we made a line segment that has two endpoints, doesn't continue indefinitely. So let's say we say that was point A, and then let's say we had another point B. And let's say we this one was C, A, B, C. And we could say the statement if B, point B, is a point, we'll say if, if B is a point, on the line segment AC comma then you get to see a lot of if then statements then AB plus ABC see AB AB plus BC, it's common sense when you're looking at this, equals AC. So if you add the lengths of both of them together, AB and BC, then the, the sum will be the combined length of the entire thing, which is common sense. So that's the segment addition postulate. Let's give you another, let's make another line segment. Actually, it's it's too crooked. We'll pretend it's straight. Pretend it's straight today. So let's say that was X. And let's say maybe over here was R. Any letters, Q, who knows. And let's say X to R was 14. And R to Q was, let's say, 20. So we know now that the line segment XQ would equal what? What do you think would equal? According to the segment addition postulate, 34. Right. 34 units. We don't know what these are. Just adding them together. 14 plus 20 is 34. So let's clear that out. Let's make another one. Let's make another line segment. And let's say we're using well, W. Maybe we'll put a dot there. We'll call it X. And maybe this we'll call Z. And let's say that WX, instead of having a number, we had a constant and a variable. So we had 2X, let's say we call it. And we'll call this 15. Now, in order to solve this, we've got to use our algebra skills, you would need to know what the total line was to find x. So let's say it said that the entire line, and I'll give this saying that the entire line was 21. So if the entire line is 21, well what's x? Remember your algebra? Well we're saying now 2x 
plus 15 has to equal 21. And we'll just do a little algebra. 2x, 21 minus 15 is 6. So we divide out the 2 on both sides. Fix those 2's. And we know x is 3. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And so now we know that line segment WX equals 6 because 3 times 2 is 6, right? X is 3, 3 times 2 is 6. And we know line segment XZ equals 15. And we know that line segment WZ equals 21 because that was given. Let's clear that out. You can always go back. So again, postulates are, in a way, common sense. And as you continue to do geometry, geometry you'll see that they are common sense. But let's look at a, well, let's look at the word congruent. You should remember congruent. Congruent is same shape, same size. So congruent line segments have the same length. So, I mean, again, common sense. If you're seeing a line segment that says AB is 2 inches, let's say, and we have another line segment over here, and let's say that's BD, and that's 2 inches, well, we know that line segment AB is congruent The line segment BD. Common sense. And you should know the symbol for congruency. So we can say the symbol is looks like an equal sign and it has that little squiggly thing on top. That's congruency. So we know that line AB is congruent to line BD. They also use tick marks. Tick marks to show congruency. For example, if I had a triangle, and let's say you show, saw a tick mark there and a tick mark there, but this one you saw had two tick marks, well, we know that this line right here with the arrow and this line with the other arrow are congruent because they both have only one tick mark. So look for tick marks for congruency also. You should also know the term midpoint. Again, it's common sense. It's this the center. It's the midpoint between two points. Let's say you had a point A and we had a line and we had point C. We say that's point A and that's point C. And let's say B, they call the midpoint. Well then that's halfway between A and B. It's in the middle. It's the midpoint. So if that was five inches or five units and B is the midpoint, then BC must also be five. And we also know that line segment AB is congruent to line segment BC. All right, let's look at a theorem. So remember, postulates are accepted as fact. They don't have to be proven, but theorems have to be. So here's one, the triangle, the triangle angle sum theorem. And it just means that all three angles of the triangle must sum to 180 degrees. As you can see here, the measure, that's M, is the measure. So make sure our pen's working here. The measure, there is. The measure of angle A and the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C must equal 180. So here it is the sum of the interior. Remember, the inside angles, the interior angles, must sum to 180. So let's just for, say that this is 100 degrees and let's just say this was, you know, 40 degrees. Let's just say. Well, what should angle C be then? I'm just putting in numbers here. We're not saying that this is true, but we're just putting in the numbers for the degrees. So we would need another 40 degrees because 100 plus 40 plus 40 
is 180. So that's the triangle angle sum theorem. The last thing we'll talk about is another term. It call, it's called the bisector. As the triangle angle sum theorem popped back up. Perhaps you want to see it again. So we'll say bisector. And bisect, the word bisect means to divide into two equal parts. So if you had a line segment and you cut it in half, let's say, now it's in two equal parts, so you bisected it. All right, so let's look at another example on that. So let's say I had... Let's say we had a segment bisector. So a bisector, a segment bisector could be a line, it could be a ray, or it could be a segment that passes through a segment at its midpoint. For example, let's say, let's say we had a line segment over here and we called it AB. And then we had a line just cut right through the middle. It has to cut through the middle. We know that's a line, and we'll call it line L, because mostly you see lines as L or M. So we know that line L is an example of a segment bisector of set line segment AB. Cuts it right in half. And a ray can do that also. Let's look at one over here. Let's say we had a Let's say we had a bisector coming over here. We called it X and Y. And then right in the middle, we had a ray coming out. Right? And so we know that at the midpoint, this ray is another example of a segment bisector because it's cutting it in half. And if you did have, let's say, uh, a segment, line segment over here, and you had a line that didn't cut it in half, like let's say over here, then that's not a segment bisector because it didn't cut it in half equally. So that would not be a segment bisector in this picture. All right, that's our video today.